Hi, I'm Tim Van Milliken from Apogee Components. In this little video, it's kind of a teaser for a presentation that I'll be doing for the National Association of Rocketry. Um, they have an annual convention called NARCON, and it's this January, and the presentation that I'm doing is about how to make composite airframe tubes, and composite means um, it's a mixture of two different things. So the mixture is carbon fiber, which gives strength, and then epoxy, which kind of locks all the carbon fibers in place. So these are some examples of some of the rockets that I've made, and we'll be using a two-part mold to make these, um, and they come out extremely lightweight. I mean, this thing, this tube right here weighs under two and a half grams, the nose cone is under a half of a gram. So altogether, it's a really lightweight rocket. Um, and this is a competition rocket, so we wanted to make it light, but we also wanted to make it glass smooth, um, aerodynamic, um, easy to make, um, and repeatable, and durable, and strong. Um, and the carbon fiber allows us to accomplish all of that. Uh, so what you're going to see in this little short video is the back half of the process where the actual part is made, but it's in the mold. And so we're going to open up the mold, pull it out, um, do some final cleanup, and get it ready to be able to put the fins on. So I hope you enjoy. This is a little teaser. Come to Narcon, um, and if you can't make it, um, you can still... Um, apply and it's all recorded so you can watch it later. So I don't get any money out of this. I'm just doing it to help you learn more about rocketry and how to make the world's finest model rocket airframe tubes that are super lightweight, that fly super high, and um, it just impresses people to no end. These things are the cutting edge of technology. So I hope you enjoy. out of the way okay so right now the mold is still closed and we're gonna listen for that that great sound of the thing just popping open that's a good sound and we flip it over and there's still a little bit of pressure in the balloon and I can feel it um, not up here, but it's it's expanded right there. And what I want to do is just kind of pop the edges. And then it will just roll right out. So I kind of roll it out. And this one looks pretty nice. And um, by pressurizing the balloon, um, now I can clean up this edge, and I'd like to get a little bit more pressure in here. Um, so I'm going to put it back, I'm going to connect it to the, uh, the hose and kind of repressurize it. Okay, so I have my hose here, and you can hear the air coming out. There's not a lot, but I only need a little bit, so I'll just push it in and I'm just feeling up here to where it's getting stiff and it is getting stiff um, so now it's nice and hard and I'll just relieve that and I'm going to take a razor blade and go along the edge just kind of take off that little bit of flash along the edge of the seam side. All right, 
that looks pretty good. Even my nose cone, if it was a nose cone, that would be pretty good. Let me zoom in a little bit. There's a little bit of a pucker right there, but this is actually, this part up here is sacrificial. Um, I just wanted to have that there so that I could pressurize the balloon so the balloon is pushing on the, the carbon fiber and uh, keeping it nice and rigid. Um, it is really rigid right now. So I'm gonna deflate it and uh, when you deflate, uh, make sure you, you clean up the edge first because this is probably the last time that you're gonna be able to pressurize it because once you cut the tip off, um, the balloon will try to expand on the edge and it's gonna try to rip that edge. All right, so uh, I'm just gonna press this in lightly and this is the way it normally goes in, but I just use this side just to kind of push that little spring. If you collapse it um, too fast, you'll see that it's collapsing. Um, it's because the balloon is sticking um, and it's kind of the balloon is pulling it in, but then the balloon relieves itself. All right, and this, now there's no air coming out, so now I'm fully deflated and I can just pull out the wand. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so now we gotta get the uh, this liner out. And the best way to get the liner out is to uh, peel it along back along itself. Um, but I need, I need it to go all the way through, so this is where I just tear off the tip of the nose just to kind of get it started. And it doesn't want to tear, so that tells me how strong it is. Alright, so... Okay, so for this I'm going to use a wood dowel. And I want to push it through, but because this is a tube and it's hollow all the way through, if I just push it, it's not going to go, it's going to go through the tube instead of pushing the tube. So I'm going to tie a knot in it. And um, I want to make this lot new, loose because I can probably reuse the liner. And I can, I can see where the liner is um, coming away from the tube right there. And so now it's coming out the tip. And so now I can just, I can pull the stick out and then just pull it this way. And basically I'm, now this is the inside of the liner coming out. And uh, my tube is still pretty good. So I just have to turn it in back inside out and I can uh, reuse it again. I put a little bit of baby powder on the inside um, so that the balloon doesn't stick to it so much. And see, so, you know, if, this, if this knot is pretty loose, you can just untie it and this liner can be used again and you can reuse it as many times as you can get it out without ripping it. All right, so this tube, well, it, it feels really light. Um, this one I decided to make all the way down to a 10.5 millimeter on the back. But I have some cutting tools. So now this part of the nose cone is going to get cut off. And the back end will also get cut off. Um, it cuts really easy with a knife or with a scissors. Now this end right here has a lot of the carbon fiber toe that goes 
here so it's a lot stiffer up here than it is up here where the toe is spread out. Um, so you'll, you'll find that it is a little stiffer on cutting, but it does cut and it snaps pretty easy. And uh, I'll trim that up later to the correct length. Um, but the front end, um, I just print, uh, 3D printed this little jig um, and it goes over the edge of the tube and that's where I want to cut off. Um, like all this is sacrificial, so I'm not worried about it. Okay, so once you get it off, then you can trim it up better. And it's still not perfectly flat, um, so what we can do is um, we can, it's actually I need to trim a little bit more because my, my jig slid a little bit. up this edge um, I leave the jig on because it stiffens it up um, and then I can just sand it and that will make it um, flat all the way across so nice and uniform and take off any burrs or any stray fibers and just, you can see I'm just kind of doing a rotating motion um, and then when you're done it looks pretty good um, now, one of the things that I wanted to do is um, cut it where I, I put in some fibers that run this way. And that purpose of that is to prevent it from tearing right here. Um, those fibers are really strong and I don't want it to tear because this is very thin. If I put a caliper on it, I bet you that's like uh, 0 0.008 or 9 inches right there. Um, and it's got a little bit of extra thickness because of those extra fibers. Um, so I got fibers going that way to prevent tearing. And then I got these long fibers along the tube um, that gives it um, some um, longitudinal stiffness to prevent it from bending. Um, once you put your parachute and streamer in there, it kind of solidifies the tube. It's pretty uh, um, flexible and um, I don't worry about it so much. I am interested in what it weighs, so I'm gonna weigh that real quick. I don't know if you can see that, but... Uh, Point four one grams. So this is um, pretty light. <laughs> really happy with it. Um, I can see along my edge. I got a little bit of a um, piece of fiber sticking up, and that's one of the longitudinal fibers. It's not. Um, So it's it's not one of it's not veil it's it actually is carbon fiber toe. So that was great. So that's a nice one. That's a beautiful one. Um, and the other thing that I like to do is to test to make sure if it holds the air. And so what I'll do is I'll just blow air in here and and cap it off here. And if I can feel it puff up, that means I know it's holding air. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> um, which means that air is not coming out of this seam. Um, it's, it's a new, beautiful tube, beautiful tube.
um, one of the things I wanted to show you why we leave that nose on is um, if we tried to pressurize it um, without the nose on, what's going to happen is we're going to try to, the balloon is going to expand out here and it's going to try to rip this. Um, and that's, you see what's happening right here is the balloon, it's really putting a lot of stress on that edge. Um, right now, since I have fibers going that way, it can handle it. But if I didn't have fibers going right there, it'd just tear. Um, so that's why we want to keep that tip on because that tip holds all that pressure and it prevents that bulb from forming up there at the top. Yep, my balloon popped. <laughs>